Wow, look at that morning. The sun just coming up over the Atlantic, just through the clouds. You can see kind of the orange tone as the sun starts to make its way across the pond. Good morning, everybody. I am Kenny Polcari, your host of the party. And today is Tuesday, December 13th, and it is a big day. It's a CPI day. Tomorrow's the Fed day. Thursday's the ECB and the Bank of England and a load of other banks day. And so this is, like I said, the unofficial... Uh, start to the end of the year and the macro data reports and then and any central bank commentary because the next two weeks are going to just be all about the end of the year christmas the holidays who's on vacation who's not who's not paying attention who is paying attention whatever but we'll get into that as the weeks go by now while you can't see me right now by the end of this broadcast you are going to see me live and in color as the sun will come up and shed light on me so what is it that you need to know today what is it that happened yesterday oh my god the algos went into buy mode ahead of today's CPI number. But the question is, what is the CPI going to say today? Is it going to say buy, hold, or sell? We're going to find that out. And tomorrow is all about the Fed Day. And then Thursday, like I said, is ECB and the Bank of England and Switzerland and Taiwan and a host of other central banks. Oil popped by 5% between yesterday morning and today. Suddenly, that whole supply-demand story is starting to make sense. And what are we having for dinner tonight? Well, this is um, recipe number six in the fish fish. Feast of the Seven Fishes for Christmas Eve, and it's bay scallops and a black truffle cream sauce. Oh my God, delicious. First of all, breaking news, SBF, right? The American Entrepreneur and Investor, which I think is defies logic, that description, has finally been arrested. He's expected to be sent to the U.S. to face the music. Okay, can I say it's time to move on now? The fact is that uh, 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 that the fact that it took this long is a disgrace, uh, and he and his team are nothing but thieves. Let's just say it for what it is. All of them are guilty of uh, a range of things as well as guilty of being idiots, but that's a whole other story. This is surely going to become an Ivy League study of epic proportions. And remember, this kid went to MIT. Uh, and so uh, that's going to certainly be a topic of conversation at MIT. So, whoa, 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 what a day it was. Stocks notching ridiculous gains in my mind. The Dow adding 530 points or 1.6 percent. The S&P up 57 points or 1.4 percent. The Nasdaq gained 140 points or 1.3 percent. The Russell added 22 points or 1.2 percent, while the transports absolutely knocked it out of the park, gaining 470 17 points or better than 3%. Two journalists from the Wall Street Journal suggest that stocks rallied because investors are anticipating softer inflation and a smaller interest rate increase. I, I have to laugh. Are you kidding? That's laughable. Have these guys been asleep for the last three months? Do they think this was new news? Because that's how they wrote this article, and it's ridiculous. We've been anticipating this for more than two months now. The Fed and J.J. Powell have been telling us that the December rate increase was going to be smaller than the 75. It was going to be 50. He all but said it. He laid it out. They've told us that they expected to see the pace of inflation begin to soften. And we have seen that in some of the macro data points, right? Think the latest PPI and the latest PCE. They've told us that we can expect the same 50 basis point hike in January, along with a 25 basis point hike in March. They've said it. They've laid it out. That is the narrative, a plan that I believe they need to keep as long as the inflation story remains the same. And right now, it remains the same. While inflation may not be coming down as fast as some of us want, the broader trend appears to be moving lower, right? So that's good. Let's, let's say it for what it is. The broader trend, though, um, I mean, the real question, though, is, is the trend lower in places that really affect or matter to you and me? And the answer to that, I venture to guess, is actually no. Healthcare costs up 20%, airline prices up 42%, housing costs up 40%, utilities up 20%, coffee's up 15%, milk's up 15%, butter's up 38%, chicken's up 15%, hotel costs up 40%. So what's coming down? Well, used car prices are coming down. That's great. Home prices are coming down. They're down about 3% because mortgage rates are up 133%. So home prices have a little bit more adjusting to do. TVs are apparently off 16% and gasoline at the pump is coming down at least for now. I mean, when you just look at the hard number, the trend is lower. But when you look at what the cost of living is, the trend is still higher. And we are about to get another data point on that today, right? 
That data point is the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which we've been talking about now for weeks. And the show today is going to be all about what that tells us. Now, the expectation is for the top line, the month-over-month CPI, to be up three-tenths of a percent, while X Food and Energy is also supposed to be up three-tenths of a percent month-over-month. CPI year-over-year is expected to be up 7.3%, while CPI X Food and Energy year-over-year is expected to be up 6.1%. All of these numbers are lower than last month on the top line. So the trend is moving in the right direction. But again, it's the stuff that we need. Uh, Is it the stuff that we need to live on or is it stuff that we don't need? The real reason for yesterday's move is that there was a rumor that the top line number is going to have a six handle on it versus the expected seven handle. And the year over year X food and energy number is going to have a five handle on it versus the expected six handle. The issue today will be, is it a rumor or is it true? Will we get the expected number? Will we get a better number? Or will we get a slightly stronger number that, by the way, is still below last month, but higher than the expectation? Because that's what happened last week when we got the latest PPI report, right? Uh, And we saw the indexes lose more than 1%, right? The number was lower than last month, but higher than the expectation. So the market went, you know, ballistic. The other things to consider uh, are exactly what parts of the CPI are lower versus not. Because the last time I checked, you can't eat a television. And today, it's the start of the December Federal Open Market Committee meeting, right? The Fed meeting with the results due out tomorrow at 2 p.m. And there is nothing new here. If anyone expects anything different than a 50 basis point hike, you haven't been going to class. But as uh, as always, it's going to be about the press conference, right? It's like the earnings season, okay? You get the report, which is actually backwards. It's history. But you pay attention to the conference call and listen to what the C-suite says about about the forward guidance, right? Because that's what it is about. And today it will be about Jay Powell's forward guidance. Um, And and that's what investors and algos and traders want to hear, right? And you know what I think, and you know what I think he needs to say. JJ needs to stick to the narrative. He needs to remain very clear, leaving nothing to the imagination or open to any interpretation at all. He should leave the conference telling everyone that while the trend appears to be moving lower, because it is, the job is not done yet and we can expect a 50 basis point hike in January and a 25 basis point hike in March, period, the end. At least until we get to the end of the first quarter of 2023, where it is widely expected that the Fed is going to pause, not pivot, meaning stop, right? They're going to stop raising rates. They're going to wait and see what the past 11 rate hikes have accomplished, right? In my opinion, there should be nothing else. No no waffling, no suggesting a pivot, no suggesting anything other than what he has uh, prepared the markets for, right? That's it, period, the end. This is it. Don't stray. Don't give anyone a chance to lead you down the rabbit hole. Absolutely not. Remember, people hear what they want to hear versus uh, hearing what is being said. So sit tight. Now, to be sure, we haven't been, uh, we haven't been uh, talking about the year-end Santa rally, right? Actually, we have been talking about the year-end Santa rally, and I think it's going to come, and many expect that it will come, and I think that's right. But I think it ends somewhere in the 4,400 range, and then the new year begins. And yesterday, we learned that Goldman is betting that stocks are going to do nothing next year and actually end 2023 below where we are now. And the gang over Bank of America is telling you to short tech next year. Oh my God, oh boy. Now that's not very bullish, nor very helpful. What tech are they talking about? They should have made that call in December 2021 because maybe they didn't notice, but NASDAQ, which is all about tech, is down 29% in 2022. But it is what it is, and that's what makes the market, both buyers and sellers. And I'm willing to be on the contra side of both of those arguments. But you have to stay awake. No sleeping in 2023, right? I, while I think it's overdone and while I think the market's going to struggle, I think 2023 is going to end up being an up year. Whether it's small or not, it will be an up year. Treasuries remain inverted, so nothing new to discuss there. The curve between the two, uh, the two year at 4.36% and the 10 year at 3.59% remains at 77 basis points wide. While the spread between the three month T bill at 4.09% and the 10 year at 3.59 remains at a 50 basis point spread. Hello, 
not a bullish indicator at all, right? But it didn't fit yesterday's narrative, right? Because that was negative. So they ignored it because it was all about positive yesterday. So you have to wait until we have a negative day. And then they're all going to pivot and say, oh, well, wow, look what the bond market's telling you, right? Be careful. And I'll still tell you, just be careful. Doesn't mean light your hair and fire and run out the door. It just means be careful. Okay. Uh, oil, it rallied and it rallied hard. Remember what I said yesterday when I asked what is going on with oil between the supply and demand concerns, right? Russia, the Nord Stream pipeline, the Saudis, uh, the price cap, the European demands, Northern Hemisphere demands, and the reopening of China, right? All adding to a, to a very... Uh, what I think is a bullish story, right? There was no reason uh, for oil to be trading down at $70 a barrel, right? And today it is not. It is trading at $74.25, up 5% from yesterday's low after traders suddenly realize that they're concerned about all those same supply and demand concerns that I raised, right? It's comical. But again, that's what creates opportunity is that chaos, right? So if you went long oil yesterday, or you remain long oil yesterday, you're benefiting today. So for now, it appears we got a $70 floor on oil and we have an $82 uh, resistance level on oil. This morning, European markets are trading around the flat line as they await today's CPI report and tomorrow's Fed announcement and Thursday's ECB and Bank of England policy statements. U.S. futures are up. They're up small, uh, but if you want my opinion, I'm not sure it holds. We had a nice rally yesterday, much of it in anticipation of today. So even if we get a better number, you have to ask, did we already account for it? Uh, in that rally yesterday, or will the algos just take it higher again today, right? JP Morgan puts out this big thing. He thinks if it comes in with the lower handle that this market's going to rally 8 to 10% in one day, which I think is a little bit ridiculous, but let's see. At 4.30 this morning, the Dow futures are up 40 points. The S&P up 4, the Nasdaq was up 10, and the Russell's up 1. In any event, if you're a long-term investor, you have nothing to worry about. And if you're a market timer, then you're realizing now why it's a losing argument. Stop trying to time and pick the tops and the bottoms and just stick to the plan. Make a plan and stick to it and use dollar cost averaging to your advantage. And if you're a day trader, well, then get ready to rumble. The S&P closed last night at 3990 after testing trend line support at 3930 once again. Remember what I said yesterday, that we were sitting right on the trend line support, so this would be key. A failure to hold here will see us test the long-term trend line at 3840, while a push up will see us test trend line resistance at 4040. Well, we held and we shot higher right? Closing in on the high of the day, right? Closing at the high of the day, actually. The S&P 4040 is only 50 points away or 1.2% higher from here, a place that we could easily go to if the algos go into overdrive. And if JP Morgan has his way, we're going up 10%, um, which I don't think is possible. I think the 1% is very possible uh, because the illogical algos, they don't understand the tone or the intonation. But sit back. Uh, if you're a long-term investor, just enjoy the ride and get ready for the Santa rally into year end. So um, until, uh, until tomorrow, take good care. But now let's talk about what we're having for dinner. So this is recipe number six. It's bay scallops and a black truffle cream sauce. Again, another dish that I serve on Christmas Eve. For this, you need the bay scallops, you know, the little ones. You need olive oil, butter, heavy cream, white wine, Pinot Grigio, Santa Margarita. You need shallots, garlic, black truffle black truffles, white truffle oil, salt and pepper, Brussels sprout leaves, one pound or a half a pound of medium pasta shells, and fresh grated Parmigiana cheese. Okay, you can make this dish in all of about 20 minutes maybe. You put a pot of salted water on the back burner, bring it to a boil so it's ready when you need it. In a very large saute pan, begin with about a half a stick of butter and a splash or two of olive oil. Turn the heat up to medium, now add in the sliced shallots and the chopped garlic, saute it around in the pan for five to eight minutes. Now, turn up the heat, get the pan really hot. Now you're gonna add the rinsed, base scallops that you have towel dried, right? You need them to be dry when you put them in the pan so that they sear. Uh, don't overcrowd the pan because you'll suck up the heat out of it. So you, you might have to do it in batches. Now, you're gonna, when you do this, uh, you're gonna add the pasta to the boiling water because that's gonna take about 10 minutes to cook. Now, once the scallops are seared, turn the heat down to medium and deglaze the pan with a little bit of that white wine. Allow it to steam off a bit so the alcohol steams away. Now you're gonna add uh, a touch of heavy cream and the shaved black truffle. Stir it well, now add the white truffle oil. Now this is key. Don't add too much. It's very potent. 
add, mix, and taste. If you need a bit more, then you do so. But if you go too much, you're gonna overpower it and then you're gonna ruin it. So always err on the side of less is better. Now, take the leaves of the Brussels sprouts, right? You've cut the bottom off the Brussels sprout and then the leaves just fall out. Add that to the pan because that's gonna give it a beautiful contrasting color, right? You're gonna have this nice deep green with the seared uh, scallops. Taste it, taste the pasta, for, taste that, make sure it's all good. Now, taste your pasta, should almost be done, right? Strain it, reserving a mug full of the water. Add the pasta shells directly to the saute pan and pour about maybe a quarter cup of that pasta water into the pan and then mix it well. Taste and adjust again with salt and pepper if necessary. Now, add a handful of grated Parmigiana cheese and mix it well so it's gonna start to get a little bit creamy. You can always add a little bit more cheese if you want. Um, you notice that the shells capture the scallop and some of the cream sauce and put it together. When you put it in your mouth, oh my God, it is perfect. Anyway, take this, serve it in a large bowl and just put it on your Christmas Eve buffet table along with the linguine and lobster sauce, the linguine and clams, the stuff calamatis, the filet of sole, right? Put it all there together when you serve it to your guests. In any event, look at this. The sun came out. The sky is a little bit cloudy today. It's not a clear blue sky. And so I wonder if that's indicative of what's going to happen for stocks and in the market. But until tomorrow, I'm Kenny Polkari. Take good care.